Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. Today, um, I'm starting a video series. This is going to be part one of my adjustable J-pole antenna. Now I know um, normally when you do a J-pole, you, you punch in the frequency you want, you cut the, the wire or whatever you're using to that particular length, you solder on the feed wire, and voila, it should be pretty decent for SWRs. Well, I was going to build that, and I started to actually gather the materials, and I started to make a J-pole. Then it dawned on me, can I make it adjustable? Now, I know from my past experience uh, building adjustable antennas, when you start adding adjustments, that does change the characteristics of the antenna. One of the proof videos I have of that I believe I was making a, a quarter wave antenna and by the time it was all said and adjustable quarter wave antenna and by the time it was all said and done and I had all of it tuned in end up being three quarter wave adjustment and I'm sure the reason being was because of the tubing I was using uh, the collars and all that you know does change the characteristics of the antenna so what I'm going to do here is, here's my plan. Now, if it doesn't work out, I am not really out nothing because I can reuse these parts for another antenna build. So it's not the end of the world if this does not work out. Now, here's what I want it to do. This is, you know, and maybe this is totally out there in the left field. Maybe this won't work. Maybe someone out there already tried this. I don't know. I didn't look it up. I didn't look up any videos or nothing like that. Um, like I said, you know, it may not work. But, hey, that's what, you know, when you experiment, then you find out your answer. So, what I want this antenna to do is I want to be able to tune it throughout the GMRS frequency band without having to recut the wire. I want to be able to tune it for a decent SWR and what I mean by decent is anything 1.5 and below is good enough in my book. You're not going to see a difference between 1.5 and 1.3 for SWR. So if I can scan the whole frequency band and check my SWRs and if they're all 1.5 or below I'm going to say, well, there we go. We have an adjustable J-pole antenna. Then I can tell you the exact measurements for the length. So you can build one without needing to wonder what length. And the only thing that you're going to need to adjust your antenna would be an SWR meter, which you should have one already, technically speaking. So that is what my plan is. Now, like I said, this may not work. People may have tried this. I don't know. I'm going to try it. Um, like I said, I can reuse the parts if I need to. Now, a J-pole antenna normally has about a 3 dBi gain, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to assume this is going to be close to a 3 dBi gain for antenna gain. Um, so that's... Uh, what my plan is. Now I'm going to be using an analyzer, VNA analyzer, to scan the bands and be able to tell you what the SWRs are and all that good stuff. So the point of me doing this is when it's all said, like I said before, when it's all said and done, I should be able to tell you the measurements and you can build it and all you need is an SWR to adjust your antenna on any frequency. So, but I'll be using an analyzer to get it uh, so I can tell you exactly what the SWRs are through what band uh, uh, you know, per frequency. So, now, let's get started. Now, I know some people make their J-poles out of copper pipe, uh, some type of piping. I want to keep the cost down, and I'm going to use steel rod. Now, this could affect the way the calculations come out um i don't think it really says on the calculator page if i remember right that you have to use a specific type of um whether it's wire or tubing i don't think it it's, it didn't specify i think you're you're able to use both and still have the same specs but i'm going to use 
eighth inch diameter steel rod. This is a four foot piece. I bought it at my local hardware store. Um, you can buy it online. I'll post some links down below. I'll post all the all the stuff that I'm talking about today for material wise for the antenna, the J pole calculator, um, the frequency list. I'll post all those links in description below. But I bought this steel rod at my hardware store. You're going to need two eighth inch steel shaft collars. They call these. They got two of them. They have an Allen wrench on them. You need two of them, and 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 they got to be eighth inch because they got to slide over the rod, as you can see, so we can make it adjustable. I bought a Allen wrench that fits the element screws in here at my hardware store. So, at the hardware store, I bought this, two of these, and the steel rod, and it was eleven dollars and sixty three cents. Like I said, I can reuse some of this if this doesn't work the way I want it to. Now, you're also going to need a chassis mount SO259 connector. I had some of these laying around because I bought a whole bunch of them about a year ago. But you can buy two of these on eBay for about 10 bucks. So let's say $5. So for my antenna build, it's going to cost me approximately, at the time of making this video, $16.63 for a J-Pole 3 dBi antenna. Um, this does not include coax. This does not include the antenna mass or any type of silicone we're going to need to put over this. So just the for the materials. Now, you're going to also need a half inch diameter. It can be it can be wood, it can be plastic, it can be steel. It does not matter because we need a half inch diameter because we got to make a bend in here and it's going to bend nicely by using something to bend it, you know, to, to gauge our bend. So, whatever you got, I am going to use a doll rod to do my bend. Okay? So now what we got here um that's the material we're going to use. Now this, like I said, this piece is a four foot piece. So I have plenty of length. I'll have extra length because I'm going to use some of that to solder on here. You'll see as I build it. This is part one. You're also going to need a way we got to do some soldering. Now you can, you, you can braise it if you have a, you know, a gas torch. Um, not everyone has that. So I'm going to do it as most with the most common tools as possible. You can either use a propane torch. I have actually this is a map gas, or if you have a big enough uh, soldering on a gun one. Now the key to doing this is heat. When you're soldering on steel, it takes a lot of heat. Now, before you can solder on steel, we need to rough this up. So, either a file or a Dremel tool. You're also going to need a way to cut the steel rod. Again, either a hacksaw or a Dremel. But you're going to need a file or a Dremel to definitely rough this up. We're going to be soldering on these collars. Okay? So, we got to rough it up to get the solder to stick better. And heat. Heat, 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 heat is very very important when it comes to this I'm using regular solder rather regular electronic rated solder which is rosin core solder okay so those are the items you're gonna need for tools now for the antenna mass I'm not sure I'm gonna use that I'll worry about that once I get the antenna built uh, you could you know we you know, can be wooden can be PVC pipe whatever so but, you know, for the most part, that's what you're going to need to build the antenna. Um, now, like I said, I'll use the analyzer to be able to analyze the antenna when it's all said and done. Like I said, maybe this has been done before. Uh, maybe it won't work. I don't know. But that's the fun part of experimenting. So here's my thought. Let's go to the computer here. And what I, like I said, I want to make this antenna to try to be adjustable because normally you solder on your feed wire and then that's it. 
you can't adjust that. So I want to make this antenna the length of it. I want to pick the frequency that makes the antenna the longest. Okay. And, and, and with that being said, if you look at the frequency chart here, 462.562 is the frequency that makes the antenna the longest. As you go down the chart, the antenna gets smaller, not by much. That's where I'm hoping by me adjusting that, I can kind of adjust it to make up for it. But it, the highest, 467.725. So now, if we go to this j pole calculator, and let's clear this, I'll post the link in the description below. Now, this calculator does the Slim Jim, and it does the j pole Supposedly, the Slim Jim is, gives you better results. I am not going to make this um, one in this video. I'm going to do the j pole because it's a little bit easier to make, and I want to test my idea first before I worry about applying it to the uh, Slim Jim. But the J-Pole is just one long antenna with a bend. That's where that wooden dowel rod I was talking about is going to come handy. We got we to gotta make a bend here. Okay? So, if you look at this, A is from here to the bottom of the bend. They're actually including that bend. That's A. And then we got C which is from here to the bend. And then we got D, which is the feed line that you would normally solder on direct. Okay. Now, the bend here is not crucial. You don't have to be exactly a half inch. So that's good news. So um, the, the Slim Jim has a little more involved. It's, it's, it's a bend and then another bend, and then you got a gap. So maybe I'll make that later. But for now, I want to see if my idea is going to work first with the J-Pole. So, I'm going to use those sleeves, those shaft collar sleeves on the feed here. And we're going to make it be adjustable here with that chassis mount uh, SO259 connector. Now, the reason I want to do that, because one, I want to screw on my coax. Two, I think it's going to be easier to adjust it equally on these two pieces of wire when it's a solid connection compared to the feed wire. You know, when you try to move this up, you're going to have a movement at different, different, um, uh, different distances. But if I use that uh, uh, SO259 chassis, I'm hoping that I can make it more of a solid. So when I move it up, it's going to move equally on both sides. You'll see as I make it. It may not make sense now, but you'll see where I'm going with that. So, when I take these numbers, so if I enter in, which I already did, but I'm going to show you this. If I go with 462.562, so if I enter 462.562, and I hit calculate, it tells me, you got to be careful now, there's a J-pole one here, and there's a Slim Jim. We're doing the J-pole. tells me in centimeters, 46.7. Now, if you want to convert that to inches, that's real simple. Go to your, your Yahoo or Google, type in CM to in inches, and it will tell you. So, what, what was it? Uh, let's go back here again. It was 46.7. Seven. So if I go to 46.7, it tells me 18.3 inches for number A. Okay, that's A, which is going to be here to here. So I want to start with the longest because I'm hoping if I start with the longest um, antenna, then by me adjusting this, I can make it up by adjusting the feed line. Now, this is the interesting part. I did this ahead of time. I did a little bit of calculations. So, you see how I how you do this. So, if you call up my little chart here that I did, this is the frequency, uh, the 462.526. In centimeters, it's 46.7. The D, which is, by the way, 
the distance for the feed point. This is where your SWRs come into factor here. That's the distance, D. That is 1.6 at this frequency. Now, if I go to the higher frequency, which is the 467.725, it's 46. The length of A is 46.2. The distance, the D, of the feed is 1.5. You're only talking, this is centimeters, you're only talking 0.5 centimeters difference and 0.1 centimeters difference. So if I go to this little chart here and I type in 0.5 and I convert that to inches, that's 0.1. If I go to 1 here, that's 0 0.03. So I'm thinking if I make this adjustable, theoretically, I should be able to adjust to make up for that distance. At least that's what the hope is. Um, so that's how I'm going to be doing this. So we want to make the antenna go by the length of the longest, which is obviously the longest would be the 462.562. That is the longest. So that's what I'm going to make my antenna length. And actually, I may make it even a little bit longer than that because remember, as I learned before, when I start making antennas adjustable, it changes the characteristics of that antenna. I can always trim it down with my Dremel tool, so I'm not worried about that. So this is the number we're going to I'm going to go with right here. So distance A, which is the J-pole one here, is going to be here to here is going to be 46.7. If you want to know what that is, 46.7, it's 18.7 inches tall from tip of there to the bottom of the U. Now, the C, which is the top of here to the bottom of the of the um, of the curve is is C. And that's going to be 15.6. So if I type that in there, six point one. Okay. So, oops, six point one is going to be from here, C to here. F is the spacing, which is not crucial, which is 1.4. So 1.4 is going to be 0.5 in inches, which is a half inch. So and we, that's not what that dowel rod's for. So that's how we're going to do that. So that's the length I'm going to use when I build this. I'm going to go by these numbers here. And then what I'm going to do, and let's go back to the camera. Since I bought this steel rod, this is way longer than I need. When I cut this off, I'm going to, since this is nice and solid, it won't bend, I'm going to solder my, when I do the feed points, I'm going to solder it like this. The plan is I'll solder it like this, one there on the for the ground, and then I'll do the center. That's going to be, when I go up and down the pipe here, or up and down the rod, it's going to be equally spaced. That's how I'm going to do it. That's what my plan is. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, post any comments or questions down below. Please subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.